On Sunday, July 14th, 2019, I had the chance to visit the small, old-school, traditional amusement park called Conneaut Lake Park, located in Conneaut, Pennsylvania. This is a really small park and features technically three roller coaster credits, and I'm just going to be discussing my experience at the park. I had already been to Conneaut Lake Park several times when I was really young, and my parents took us, but I hadn't been to the park in about eight or nine years. And I found out pretty recently from a really loyal viewer of mine that commented on one of my recent videos that Conneaut Lake Park, the second Sunday of every month, does a $5 all-day ride wristband. Now, the regular price is only $10, so it's really cheap regardless, but that's a great deal, $5. I decided to go to the next one, which was July 14th. So I gotta say, I was not expecting the park to be as busy as it was. It was really busy. And this is one case where I was actually really happy to see that. We pulled up to the parking lot and it looked pretty packed. And I'm really happy to see that this park is actually pulling in some people and hopefully making a little bit of money because they were doing really bad several years back. They were closed down for three or four seasons from about 2007 to 2010. And actually, when I was a very young coaster enthusiast back in 2007, my parents took us to Conneaut Lake Park to help clean some stuff up. We just volunteered to like help clean up the park a little bit. After it had closed down, it was a mess. And they've really made it look pretty nice. Nothing new really here. Nothing major anyway. They haven't added any rides to this park and I don't know how long. I don't think they've added any new rides in the 2000s that I'm even aware of. If they have, they've just been like simple flat rides. And uh, th this is a pretty nice park overall. They just have a lot of like portable type like carnival rides. And like I said, they have a few coasters. They have Blue Streak, which is their marquee attraction. The 1938 Edward Vettel designed wooden coaster so it, it's pretty cool it's a really fun ride um, I, I might do a separate review on that in the future and just talk about it a little bit let me know if you guys would like to see that if you guys want to see that I'll be really happy to talk about it some more so they have the blue streak which is the standout attraction here and there is Little Dipper, which is an Alan Herschel steel kitty coaster. Very classic, opened in 1950. I've actually never gotten this credit that I can remember. I don't think I wrote it when I was younger. If I did, I don't remember it. And then there's also Devil's Den. Unfortunately, I did not get to ride this when I went on July 14th because it was so busy and the line was so long for this. And I know the capacity on these rides are absolutely horrendous. And I knew that line would take forever and we didn't have a whole lot of time here. So we decided to leave, even though everybody kind of wanted to ride this, we decided it wasn't worth the wait. I've been on this a couple times when I was younger and it's it's fine. It, it's a fun ride. It's technically a roller coaster credit, but it functions as a dark ride. But it's pretty cool. It just has lots of like neon stuff and paintings and whatnot inside. Really classic ride. It's a classic pretzel amusement ride company manufactured ride, as a matter of fact. So pretty cool there. We ate some food here and the food was pretty good. I was pretty willing to pay the prices here compared to a lot of bigger parks you go to. The food prices here are pretty reasonable. I still think some of the stuff is a bit overpriced, but it's not terrible. It's definitely a lot more affordable than a lot of other parks out there. And the food is decent that we had. We had some loaded fries with like cheese and bacon and sour cream and a funnel cake and a couple chicken fingers. Altogether, we spent like $18 for a drink and chicken and fries and a funnel cake, so not too bad. This is a park that you can absolutely just come to like on the way to another park. Maybe you're just making a day trip to come out here and just knock out things in a couple hours. As I said earlier, the day I visited this park, it was the $5 ride wristband day. Even still, I was not expecting this park to be that busy. The times I've been here before, the park's pretty much been completely dead. In any videos or anything I watch online, there's barely anybody in the park. So I was expecting just to kind of go here and be able to like marathon the blue streak and, you know, just kind of do whatever. But that was absolutely not the case. Actually, one of the gripes I had about this visit, I don't know if they always run one train on Blue Streak. I'm guessing they probably do. They have two trains for the Blue Streak, and one of them is the original train which I believe I rode in when I rode Blue Streak several years back. But then they also have the National Amusement Device Trains, which they had running on the day that I went. And the original one was just parked. 
I don't know if they ever run two trains on this, but with the crowds that day, they were only running one train, and also one of those rows was closed off for some reason. So only 16 people per train, and it takes forever, you know, for the ride to cycle all the way around and come back. So I waited about 45 minutes and rode the blue streak, and I'm really glad I got to ride it, but I only rode it once, and it, that was fine. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm really glad I got to ride it. I only rode two other rides while I was here, the Music Express and the Carousel. The rest of the time I was at the park, I walked around a little bit, took pictures, we looked in a gift shop, and also a good chunk of time was spent waiting in the line to order food and then actually eating. So all in all, I spent about three hours max here. If you go on a regular day when I'm guessing the park isn't nearly as busy, you should definitely be able to knock everything out within a couple hours here. It's a really nice place right on the lake. It's pretty nice looking, it has a very classic old school amusement park feel because that's what it is. It opened in 1892, so it's one of the oldest in the United States. All in all, if you're looking for a park to make a quick stop to, maybe get a couple new credits just spend a couple hours at on the way to another amusement park or just on a road trip or whatever. Kaniat's a pretty nice place to come to. You're not going to be blown away here. It's just a nice place to experience. Thank you guys so much for watching this review of Kaniat Lake Park. Let me know if you guys have been to Kaniat Lake Park and what are your thoughts on it. Or maybe you're thinking about visiting Kaniat Lake Park soon and hopefully some of the stuff in this video helped you out a little bit. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you guys so much again for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.